Who would have thought that something lives there? Stunning Pluto images show something unusual, and scientists are amazed. What is responsible for the scaly bumps moving on Pluto's surface? Is this really a natural phenomenon, or is there something hidden beneath Pluto's surface that we can't imagine in our wildest dreams? Scientists have warned that something is going on on this planet of ice and nitrogen that could now dramatically change our view of the entire solar system. The best Pluto photos of all time come from the New Horizons space probe. Since December 2015, this unique space project has delivered breathtaking views of the dwarf planet. Can you imagine that before the mission, we almost didn't have a single real image of the planet? It sounds crazy, but it's true. We only had a blurry image taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. We did have images before that, and who hasn't seen the textbooks with nine planets, including Pluto? But these were always just artistic representations of the planet and not real pictures. Now you're probably wondering, why weren't we able to observe Pluto from our home planet, when we can see thousands or even billions of light years away with our super telescopes? The answer to this question is simple. Even our best telescopes can only collect light traveling in space. Stars that are millions of light years away emit enormous amounts of light. But Pluto itself emits no light and it moves in an area of our solar system where even the light from our sun is very scarce. Of course, planets can reflect starlight. This makes them visible in the darkness of space. Our Earth appears as a tiny pale blue dot in this image from the Voyager probe. The photo was taken when Voyager was already on its way out of the solar system. Our planet is visible because the probe was looking towards the sun when it took the photo, and because the Earth is very well illuminated by the sun. Pluto is different. If we look in its direction with telescopes, we are looking out of the solar system, and on top of that, we are looking into a region where it is pitch black. So how did New Horizons master the challenge of imaging a planet in one of the darkest corners of the solar system so sharply and in such detail? We can already reveal this much. There were no spotlights or artificial light sources in use when New Horizons photographed Pluto in all its glory for the first time. The probe used a highly sensitive camera system and special instruments to photograph Pluto at a great distance from Earth, despite the weak sunlight conditions. The main camera called LORI, which doubles as a high-resolution telescope, and RALF, a combination color camera and infrared spectrometer. These two captured detailed images and data by taking advantage of very weak sunlight. Artificial sunlight sources such as spotlights would never realistically have been sufficient to expose an entire planet. Pluto is a fairly small planet, but even the largest spotlights we could build would never be enough to illuminate a planet from space with enough light to light it up brightly. Instead, the high sensitivity of the instruments and an extremely long exposure time made it possible to obtain a perfect image of Pluto. The image surprised the scientists, as this was not how they had actually imagined Pluto. Although the Hubble image already showed initial indications of colors, the color spectra were more yellowish and orange. It was a surprise that Pluto appeared in a rich red and white alongside ochre colors and had such a varied surface. It wasn't long before the world of science experienced another drastic change in its view of Pluto. It's alive! Something is moving on Pluto! As you now know, we hardly knew anything about Pluto before New Horizons came along. Before the first real facts we got, we had a lot of speculation about the planet. For a long time, scientists thought that so far out in the solar system, in the cold and dark, there would only be barren and desolate rocky planets. But they were wrong, and they were not only wrong about Pluto. As you probably know, Pluto was stripped of its status as a true planet by the International Assembly of Astronomers and Planetary Scientists in 2006. And since then, Pluto has only been a dwarf planet, along with a few others such as Eris, Haumea, and Makemake. These mini planets in the Kuiper Belt were also thought of in scientific circles as boring and dead lumps of rock. But Pluto made the start and shows a completely different face. Since the New Horizons photo of the century, Pluto has been known as the planet with a heart. And since then, Pluto has made even more friends. It sounds really heartwarming because after Pluto was stripped of its planetary status, thousands of children wrote letters to associations such as NASA, saying that Pluto must remain a planet. 
It's almost unbelievable how much sympathy this planet has gained, even though no one had actually seen it until 2015. The heart of Pluto is officially called Tombo Regio and divided into two parts. The western part is Sputnik Planitia, a vast plane of nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide ice. New Horizons measured a thin atmosphere above the region, which indicates geological activity. This plane is surrounded by mountainous regions. The eastern part is characterized by a darker, heavier crater surface, consisting of more complex, older terrains with different geological features. The entire heart is thought to play an important role in Pluto's climate and atmosphere, as the light and dark areas absorb and reflect sunlight differently, leading to atmospheric motions. And New Horizons found that it may even snow on Pluto. However, the real kicker was this image, which shows a honeycomb structure. That's not so unusual at first, because Pluto has a lot of varied and exciting surface structures. The true explosiveness of the discovery of these polygonal structures in the Sputnik Planitia region only became apparent over time. Scientists were just about to clarify which processes on Pluto had contributed to the formation of these interesting scale-like honeycombs when they had a suspicion. These structures seemed somehow strangely alive to astrogeologists. Similar landscapes are formed on Earth by convective forces, but that would mean that Pluto is still geologically alive and active in its interior. Until now, researchers have considered this to be impossible. The edge length of the polygon varies, which indicates different convective processes beneath the surface. It must be internal heat, which in combination with sublimation, ensures a kind of circulation of the ice material. Warm material rises, cools on the surface, and sinks again, resulting in a dynamic renewal of the surface. These processes explain the relative youthfulness of this region and prove that Pluto is alive. If the planet has heat in its interior, it can theoretically harbor water and oceans under the ice sheets. Although the movement and formation of these polygons do not directly indicate life in the form of animals or an unknown species, they do demonstrate dynamic and complex geological processes. The fact that such active geological processes exist on a seemingly cold and dead body like Pluto expands our understanding of how celestial bodies can store and transform heat. Other dwarf planets in the Kuiper Belt have also shown interesting surface features and evidence of active geological processes. For the world of science, this is nothing short of a miracle. A clear view of breathtaking landscapes. What if I told you that New Horizons found even more living landscapes on Pluto? This high resolution reveals new details of Pluto's rugged, icy cratered plains, including the layers in the inner walls of many craters. The landscape does look as if something had just walked across it, or as if rocks had fallen into a fresh blanket of snow. If we look at the dimensions, it quickly becomes clear how huge the craters are. New Horizons took the new photos at a distance of just 16,000 kilometers. At its closest approach, the probe even came within 12,550 kilometers of the dwarf planet. The images have a resolution of 77 to 85 meters per pixel so that structures as large as a soccer field could be seen on the surface. The photo with the polygonal structures also shows the breathtaking mountains. However, mountains on Pluto are probably not made of rock as they are on Earth, but of huge blocks of ice. Scientists explain that the crumbled edges in particular, which look like boulders, give the impression of fallen ice. New Horizons carried out this close encounter, during which many more sensational photos were taken in July 2015. The data collected was so extensive that the probe was only able to transmit a small part of the most important images to Earth. Much of the data was stored on board the probe for later transmission. Only when New Horizons moved away from Pluto again did the probe use an observation-free period to transmit the data to Earth. All in all, it took months, and it is almost unbelievable because it was not until August 2016 that the last bit collected during this extreme close approach reached the mission team on Earth. This image shows how ice erosion and faults on Pluto have probably also formed a landscape that resembles a rough terrestrial wasteland topography. Wasteland topographies on Earth are, for example, deserts, salt plains, the Arctic and Antarctic ice deserts, but also man-made structures such as abandoned and exploited mining landscapes. 
This contrast-enhanced image shows the frozen canyons in the north of Pluto. The region is known as the Lowell Regio. Percival Lowell was the founder of the Lowell Observatory, to whom we owe the discovery of Pluto. In fact, the discoverer was astronomer Clyde Tombaugh. Pluto's North Pole can be seen at the top left, a little off-center. The pale floor of the wide gorge appears bluish in the picture and runs vertically to the south. Higher elevations appear yellowish here thanks to a certain color filtering, and the depressions are bluish. Based on the color differences alone, researchers can find out fairly precise information about the heights of the landscapes and depths. This allows for unique remote mapping. In addition to nitrogen ice, the measurements taken by New Horizons also revealed plenty of methane ice in this northern region. Water ice is probably rather rare on Pluto. This dark spectacle shows the side of the planet facing away from the sun. New Horizons photographed Pluto here in front of the Sun, which is around 4.9 billion kilometers away, creating the shimmering corona. The light reveals the complex layers of the hazy atmosphere. Planetary researchers suspect that Pluto has weather cycles. There is a lot of methane and carbon monoxide in the atmosphere. These gases are partially frozen on Pluto due to the extremely low temperatures and are released into the atmosphere when they are warmed by solar radiation, resulting in a very dynamic atmosphere and seasonal moods. In contrast to Earth, where water is the main component of weather cycles, on Pluto, nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide could drive similar cyclic processes in their solid, liquid, and gaseous states. Click on subscribe now because there will be even more impressive videos soon.